Hello everyone, Linda Israel here, and I am sharing with you day one or January one of the January creative prompts that we are putting together is part of the Friendly Junk Journal People Facebook group. You'll be able to get these prompts on YouTube. They'll be part of the videos that I create. And if I don't have a video, there will be a posting in the community. I'll also have these in the Friendly Junk Journal People as a Facebook event. So definitely click the show more below in the description box and you'll be able to get the links to the event, the Facebook group, as well as my blog and the products that I use whenever I do a video. Remember, you can also click just below if you're on a computer, click on the gear. You can change the speed to two times the speed. You can also go up on an iPad and do it on the three little dots in the corner over here. So basically, we decided in the Friendly Junk Journal people, Robin is one of my right-hand persons, and that we kept getting people wanting to do a prompt, a daily prompt to do something in their journal, whether it be to journal about a certain thing or to create something. So we decided we'd give this a try for the next month and see what y'all think. If you like it, hopefully you will give me back some feedback so I know that you like it. Definitely leave comments on anywhere that you see a post about the January creative prompts so we know that you're watching and that you're enjoying those prompts, okay? So all of that said, what it, these prompts are designed to do is to jumpstart your creativity, to get you to thinking a little bit differently, and to use your journals. I know a lot of people just make journals and they don't use them, but we want you to use them. And I'll give you tips and ideas as we go. You know, all of those things that people say, like I don't like my handwriting and so on. We'll kind of talk about all of those. So these are just suggestions. If you want to play along, Feel, feel free to do so. We'd love for you to post photos of your finished project, whatever it may be, from the prompt. So if you took the prompt and you decided, I didn't want to do that, but it inspired me to do something else, well, tell us that. Show us a picture. If you want to do a video, show us what you did. We'd love to have you share that in the group. All right, so let's get started here. So we're going to have a daily prompts. I will pre-record all of these videos ahead of time so that I can get them out timely. And if there's not going to be a video, like I said, there'll just be a photograph of the project and then I'll have a little written description about it. So for today, January 1, it says use fibers today and then describe three moments of the previous holiday season that meant the most to you. So I decided I'm going to use fibers. What, what am I going to use fiber wise? Well, I've got some yarns. I've got some chenille yarn. I have this uh, metallic, really thick thread. I have some crochet thread. I even have some ribbon. So I thought I would make a, you ready? A tag that's going to be a bookmark that has a tassel. I'm going to use the same technique that I used for, I believe it was day 11 of the 12 days of junk journal gift ideas for 2019. I'll have a link so you can also watch that video to inspire you. Um, basically, what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a tassel first and then we're going to make a tag to apply this to. So I'm going to grab some of these fibers here. So I'm just kind of collecting them all up into my hand. I'm trying to use up things that I have. There's not much left of this um, crochet thread here, it looks like. So maybe I'll get a little closer to using that up. All right, so I've got all of these fibers collected into my hand here. And I've got a little cardboard piece. I've got a tutorial that shows how I made this. And I'm going to use this as my tassel foundation. And I'm going to wrap this around. Oh, let's go like three times maybe. And I'm just going to go ahead and trim off the excess at the bottom here. I'm going to use my giant paper clip to help hold these fibers in place until I am ready. Then I've got a needle here that I'm going to use 
to help tie this. So I'm using this little space right here that I made. And I'm going to take these fibers and some thread and I'm going to tie this off. My fingernails are so long sometimes I can't get a hold of the threads. So I'm just tying off where the opening is here. And I'm just going to hold this little thread out of the way so I can have it for later. And all I'm going to do is using this little opening is I'm going to keep wrapping around, tightening it up as I go, so I can get that tassel look. When I get closer to the end, I'll kind of just catch a stitch, if you will, where I go up through the fibers, and I'll just kind of wrap it around a few more times. Once I feel that I've got it pretty secure, I'm going to go ahead and tie this off, and then I'll cut it loose. All right, so I've got the top part tied off. I'm just going to use a bulb pin. I do offer these for sale in my shop, so if you don't need a thousand of them, you can get them online in a few places. But if you just want a few, I do have those. And all I'm doing is slipping all these fibers that are at the top into that bulb pin. Okay, so I've got that up in there. It takes me a little bit longer sometimes to do it. I'm going to go ahead and cut the bottom here and pull away my tassel by just sliding it off. And so now I have this fun tassel with some good fibers in it. And it's kind of dark, but I like the red with it. But since my journal is red and black with a little bit of vintage colors on there. Okay, so we got our tassel made. We've used our fibers, but now I want something to attach it to. And let's get a couple of supplies out and let's make some uh, tag to put this on. So I grabbed a few things from my stash. This is an oversized postcard that I had in my stash. I've got a couple of dictionary pages and a book page that was painted red. And I think what I want to do is basically just take this and I'm going to tear it and collage on top of this little postcard here. So I've got a few pieces laid aside. I've got what I call my glue sponge or glue pot. I do have a tutorial for the glue sponge. I think is what I called it. Um, it's basically taking an airtight container, putting a couple of sponges in it, and then filling it up with some Aline's Tacky Glue. And apparently I let it run everywhere. I've got a paintbrush here. And all I'm going to do is pick up some of this glue and I'm going to put it onto my postcard here. It's a little bit runny. I may need to add some regular glue. So I just take regular glue and add it in. I've already got plenty of water in there. I, you know, you just need a little bit of water. Just enough that it runs a little bit um, and is not real gooey. So you'll have to play with it because everybody's different where they live, your humidity and moisture content in the air may be completely different than what I have. Okay, that's thicker. So I'm just gonna grab a few pieces and place them on here. I'm gonna trim off the excess so I can use some of these pieces. Okay, so I've put the book pages all over the postcard. It's a little damp, but I think it's good enough for now. I'm going to grab some of this red piece and just cut some pieces and tear some pieces to put on here. All right, so I'm going to let this dry for a little bit and then we'll come back and we'll do some more layers on top of here. So this is pretty much dry and I have trimmed off the excess that was sticking off the edges. And I think now what I want to do is I'm going to do some stamping over this. I'm just going to grab a scrap of paper so that if I stamp off the page, I won't get it on my desk. I've got the diamond bar, and I think what I want to do is stamp that in black. And I'm stamping this randomly all over because I plan to cut it up. So I'm not really worried about where I place everything. I'm not worried if I don't get a good impression. I just want to add a little bit of texture to this card. Okay, so just adding a little bit here and there. I'm going to go ahead and use the script stamp all over. So we're starting to fill in that background just a little bit. I have this post 
card collage. I'm going to test to see if I want this color. That is a darker red. I've got fire brick red. That's a distress ink. Okay, I think that's the better color. So I'm going to ink this up onto the script postscript collage and just add a little bit here and there. So it's just filling in that background. All right, and then the last thing I want to do is I've got a stencil here. This is from my Artistic Stencil Club for January, and it's little hearts. I call it the heart tile. So you can kind of see there's hearts there, and it makes a little tile. And I thought what I would do is I've got some gold acrylic paint, just some cheap uh, gold acrylic paint here. So I'm going to put a little bit onto a palette. This bottle is almost empty, so I don't need a whole lot. And then I've got a distressing blending tool with the little distressing sponge. I reuse it over and over and over until it just doesn't work anymore. I rinse it out with water so it's soft right now. And I'm just going to grab a little bit of this gold paint. And I'm just going to kind of randomly go around a few places adding a little pattern. So there's just be a little bit of a pattern here and there. I think that's good. I'm just adding a little bit of texture. I'll go ahead and clean my stencil. I have some water over here to the side. I use a cake pan uh, that's big enough to hold the eight and a half by 11 sheet stencil. And then for my dauber, I'm going to put it in the water and clean it out. I'm just using up what was left of that gold paint by scraping it onto a book page. It'll be handy later on. I'm going to dry this. I like how it's coming together. It's just kind of random. We're just using up bits and pieces and junk and whatnot. Um, I may go ahead. I think I'm going to spray this with some Tattered Angels. I've got Craft. It's kind of a bronzy gold with a little bit of a hint of a brown kind of vintagey. And I just want to do that just to kind of stake that stark white out of the dictionary pages that I use. And it'll add shimmer to the whole piece. This is one of those projects that once you get started, you'll just keep playing and adding layers and adding layers. <laughs> I'm going to drive this. I'll be back. All right. Well, I think I've pretty much used the mixed media portion that I want to put on here. On the back side, I've got a 8.5 by 11 sheet of black. Uh, text weight paper and I'm just going to glue that down on the back side here and that gives me a base that I can then add more layers onto if I want for writing. All right so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to trim this to be the size of bookmark that I want. I think I want it to be two and a half inches wide so I'm just going to go on to my paper cutter and just trim that. And I'll save this piece. I'll use it somewhere on later on, probably in the journal. And I think I want it to be, let's measure my journal. That's what I need to do. So my journal cover that I made is nine inches. And I think I want this tall enough that it sticks out, but I don't want it sticking out that far. I just want it just enough. So I'm going to cut this. Actually, what I'm going to do is punch this first and then I'll trim it because that kind of takes some of the size off. And I think I'm going to do it from this end. So I've just got this Paper Studios punch that makes a little tag shape at the top. So I'm just going to feed this in here. And it may stick a little bit because that's really thick. So I'm just going to trim this portion off here. All right, so now I've got my tag piece. So let's measure how far out it is. So it's just under 11 inches, and I think I'm going to go ahead and bring it down to 10 inches. So just a small, about an inch will hang out the top of my journal. Okay, so there's the back side. Here's this side. Let's apply some distress inks all the way around. So if we check this, this should kind of stick out the top of my journal, kind of being a true bookmark, marking my spot. And I think I've got, I've got some sorry silk here. What if I were to take a little strip of this 
I think I'm just going to cut a little piece here. Let me get my other scissors. I'm going to cut a little piece. Man, it's running by here. This is silk that I got from Dust Fairies on Facebook. I'll have her info information in the description box below. She sent me a whole package of wonderful fibers. And I'm really having fun using those. I like that. I think that'll look really good. I think let's go over to the sewing machine and let's stitch this down. So sewing cam alert. All right, so I've just got black thread in the upper and lower on my sewing machine here. And I've got a zigzag stitch. I'm using a regular needle, whatever needle you would use to sew fabric. Uh, regular fabrics use the same with your paper because we are usually about the same thickness. So I'm just going to zigzag stitch around this little area. So I just stitched all the way around. Alright, so we've got the little sentiment put down. Here is my tassel or the fibers for today's prompt. I'm going to put this on here. So that will work like that. And here is my journal. And I'm going to flip over to the first day. So that's where my fibers are going to be. And let's write. I'm using a Sharpie pen. It is called a no bleed pen. They do make these. So it's a Sharpie no bleed. I'll have a link to probably Amazon or something. All right. So now we're supposed to describe three moments of the previous holiday season that meant the most to you. So I'm going to sit here and write, and then I'll show you uh, what it looks like when I am done. I am grabbing a stack of smooth papers because I have these tags and extra bits in here so that I'll have a little bit smoother surface to write on. So we're going to do uh, January 1. Okay, so I wrote, um, use fibers today, then describe three moments from the past holiday season that meant the most to me, and that was one, spending time with Henry, my husband. Even though he was busy, we still found time to spend together. Two, spending time with family, no stress over gifts. We just got together and had a great visit. And then number three, spending time with friends, meeting for coffee or games. It was great to spend time with friends. And then I wrote, I think we often forget that the best give we can give, the best gift we can give is ourselves. We need to spend more time with those I love in 2020. So, that is my first journal prompt in the journal that I made. If you miss this journal, go back and look for the composition, uh, uh, altered composition notebook, I think is what it's called. But I'll have a link in the description box below. And I hope you enjoyed this little prompt for today to kick us off, to get us started. Come back tomorrow where we're supposed to use something blue on our page. So I will work on that and that will be coming up. Do check out the Friendly Junk Journal People Facebook group. Again, go just below Click on see more, show more, read more below to get the links to all of the social media connectors, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, as well as the Facebook groups and my blog and the products that I use today. If you have any questions, please, please, please feel free to ask. I'll do my best to answer those. And of course, know that I go live on Mondays at 3.45 p.m. Central Standard Time and again on Thursdays at 12.30 p.m. Central Standard Time. Thank you so much for watching, everybody. Please like, comment, and share this video. Have a great day. Bye.